In this video I'm going to show you how to create a first JavaFX project and how to organize the main class. We begin with a blank Eclipse IDE, which should look about like this. To create a new project we go to the file menu and click on new and other. There we navigate to the JavaFX folder and then click on JavaFX project. We click then on next and here we choose a name for our project. I'll call it first FX. Here in the middle we should double check that we will use the version 8 of Java for our project. Further on we can choose a specific version for our project. But for now we will go with Java 8. We then click on finish. We will then have a look at the project folder and we can see that the project is not entirely empty when we start the project. For now only this first folder, the source folder, will be interesting for us and our project. And we can also see that there is a first package, the application package. Inside the package there is a main class and an application.css file. The CSS file is useful for the visual styling of our project, but we will talk about this much later in our course. So we can delete this file for now. And we focus our attention on the main class, which I have opened here. If you're not familiar with Java or any other programming language, this might look intimidating or confusing to you. And because of that, I will delete most of the content here and will start writing it from scratch. Okay, but what do we have here in our main class? We have a start method and we have a main method. The main method is basically the first method that will be called when we start our program. For the development with JavaFX, we will ignore this method main for most of the time. A lot more important to us is the start method, which takes one argument, a stage, with the name primary stage. As the name start implies, this is also one of the first methods that will be called when we start our program. But it will be called slightly after the main class. It is responsible to launch the first stage of our program. A stage is basically a ground level of our application. The first window that will always be launched is the primary stage, hence the name. On the stage we can place all our elements and widgets like buttons, labels or text fields. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a private stage with the name primary stage above the start method. This will actually instantiate the element stage that we give as an argument in the start method. So inside the method we say this primary stage equals primary stage. Don't get confused by this way of writing it. If you're familiar with Java or anything else, you're of course familiar with this. If you're not, don't get confused with it. This is basically a way of connecting this stage with the argument that is given in here and to make it available for the use in the rest of the program. Alright, the basic layer of our program exists. We could now add one more line of code, primary stage dot show, and we were able to start our program. Let's do it. Here's our program. Of course, nothing is on it, because we didn't create any element, we didn't create a view. So let's rather close it again. And let's also get rid of this line. This was just an example that shows you that the very basics of our program already exists now. What I'm instead going to do is create another method underneath the start method. So we'll write public void main window. This method is going to be responsible to display all the elements for our first window. It will connect to all the paths that are part of the first window. By separating it in an own method, we give more structure to our code and it also gives less flexibility because we can call this main window wherever we want. So one thing is important that we call it up here. Because as we know, the start method is the first method that will be called when we start our program. But nobody is calling the main window on default, so we have to make sure that it's called here and our first window will be started. However, this is not going to happen so far, because our main window method is empty. So let's focus on this method now. The first thing we are going to do in this method is to connect to the view file, which will be responsible to display our first view. So we click with right click on the application package and go to new, other, and again in this JavaFX folder we click on new fxml document. We click on next and here we choose a name for our view file. We call it main window view because it will be responsible to display the first view. Here we can see the content of the created file. 
It is almost empty, but it contains an anchor pane. The anchor pane is basically the empty canvas of the window. But let's close it for now. Now that we have the view file, we can connect to it. We create an object of the fxml loader. We call it loader and say new fxml loader. We first have to import it and we always have to make sure to import the javafx elements because in many cases there could be similar named elements from different libraries that might confuse our program. As an argument for our fxml loader object we say main dot class dot git resource and in here we connect to the view so we say main window view dot fxml this is basically the path to the file and because it is in the same package as the main class we don't have to give any more detailed path structure here but depending whether you're working on windows or mac you might need to put a semicolon in front of this. So if you're working on a Mac, you need to put it here. But in my experience on a Windows computer, you don't have to do it. On the next line, we'll call the anchor pane that we just saw in the fxml view file. So we say anchor pane, and we call it pane. And we call again our loader object, and say loader.load. Again, we have to import this anchor pane. And the loader we have to surround with a try catch exception. We click here. But in order to keep this whole method more readable, I will include everything in the try catch phrase. Next, we're going to connect to the controller class. But again, it doesn't exist so far. So we click again with right click on the application package and say new class. And we call the controller main window controller. You will notice a consistency here. We'll call this method main window, then the corresponding view file main window view, and the corresponding controller file main window controller. This will help us, especially when our program grows later on, to keep a structure and to keep everything in order. Okay, now we can connect to the controller file. So we create an instance of the controller class that we just created. We call it by saying main window controller and call it main window controller. And we say loader get controller. This one is imported automatically. In the next line, we'll create a scene. We'll say scene, we call it scene equals new scene. We have to import it first. And here is a good example. The first scene is from com sun something. Yeah? And only the second argument is the JavaFX scene that we really want. So we have to be careful when importing this element. The scene object takes an anchor pane or any pane as an argument. But in our case, it's an anchor pane. So what is the scene? Just like the name implies, it is a new scene on our primary stage. So meaning the primary stage is the window itself but the scene is the content that it displays. And the scene itself takes the anchor pane as an argument, since the pane loads all the smaller elements like buttons, labels, text fields, and so on that we will in a later video add to our view. So as you might guess, the scene itself will become an argument for the stage. So we call the primary stage again and say set scene. And in the scene, of course, the scene is our argument. The last thing we have to do here is to call the primary stage and say show, like I showed before. Let's summarize what we just did. So at the beginning of our main window method, we connect the view file. We then load the anchor pane and the controller class. Then we create a new scene and load the anchor pane in the scene. Then we load the scene with the anchor pane in the stage and we show the stage. This is basically the structure we were going to use for every window that we're going to create in our program. 